Welcome back chemists. In this video I'm going to teach you how to predict bond polarity or calculate bond polarity. So if you want to decide if a bond is ionic, polar covalent, or nonpolar covalent, this is the video for you. First thing you need to do is have these rules. Um, my students have them on their foldable right here. So bond polarity, molecular polarity, they open it up. There's the rules. This is where they should write their examples when they watch this video. And they have an electronegativity table also. You're going to need to have one of those. So if you don't have the rules, write them down. If you don't have an electronegativity table, find it in the book or print one. So here's mine. I'm going to use this one during the video. So electronegativity is the ability to pull on electrons in a chemical bond towards the nuclei of, of that atom. So every atom was rated. Uh, Linus Pauling came up with this. It's called the Pauling scale. So fluorine has the best ability to pull electrons towards its nuclei in a chemical bond and francium is the lowest, okay? So find one of those, make sure you have it, we're gonna use it. Next, you need to have um, maybe some cutoffs are easier than the rules. So these are the most common cutoffs. Be aware, ask your teacher what they're gonna do for the cutoffs or uh, what your textbook does because there are some differences, whoops, sorry, in different textbooks, okay? But these are the ones I'm gonna follow uh, in this video, okay? Next, um, I'm gonna do two examples and you're gonna do one, how fun. Here we go. So ethanol is the first molecule I'm going to have us try to do the bond polarities for. Ethanol is a common molecule, and it, a lot of chemists like this molecule because once you build it with the space filling, you know, molecule or the ones that show the bond, it looks like a dog. So everybody loves this molecule. Okay. First thing you need are all of the bonds. So a dot structure is the fastest way. So you may have to start with a dot structure. Uh, maybe you'll be given the dot structure. Next thing you need to do is list all the bonds here, okay? So there's carbon-hydrogen bonds in all those locations. Carbon-carbon, carbon-oxygen, oxygen-hydrogen. So I already listed them right here. Look at that. If you are worried you can't subtract, grab a calculator so that you can put the numbers in so that you don't make a silly mistake on just subtracting because that's all we're going to do, okay? So grab the electronegativity table and find the atoms you're looking for. Hydrogen-carbon, here we go. Hydrogen's 2.1. Carbon is 2.5, so very simply, you write down 2.1, you subtract that from 2.5, super easy. Take an absolute value, because you can't have negative numbers if, with electronegativity differences, and you get 0.4, voila. So then you grab your cutoffs, remember, check with your teacher. Um, most people would classify a carbon-hydrogen bond as nonpolar, but I'll be honest, some say that it's slightly polar, okay? And it is towards the high end of that cutoff. Some books say that if it's zero, it's called pure nonpolar. But most will say that a carbon-hydrogen bond is nonpolar, okay? So after you have your difference, make sure you list that this is a nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar covalent. And then if you need to, just add the word bond, okay? Next, let's try another one. This one's an easy one, right? Carbon-carbon. So we've got 2.5 and 2.5. You can probably skip showing the work. You know, I don't think your teacher's going to make you show 2.5 minus 2.5, but just in case, it's zero. So that's an easy one. That one is definitely going to be a nonpolar covalent bond. In fact, some books might call that a pure um, nonpolar covalent bond because the difference is zero. Here, let's get going. This is easy, right, guys? So you've got to look up the next one, carbon and oxygen. There we go, 2.5 and 3.5. Another easy one mathematically, 2.5 minus 3.5. I haven't even grabbed my calculator. I'm feeling pretty confident, 1.0. The other thing nice about this one is that lands well within the cutoff range of saying that it's polar. You aren't going to have anybody who's going to you know, disagree with you on that. Okay, nonpolar covalent bond. Almost done. One more, oxygen and hydrogen, at least for my example. So we've got, um, oops, what am I doing? We've got oxygen and hydrogen, 3.5 and 2.1. We've seen those before. 3.5. We probably wouldn't even need the absolute value this time either, but I'm going to put it. In fact, you could put it every time. And so that ends up with the biggest difference, 1.4. Again, well within the cutoff, all nonmetals, polar covalent bond for the win. Okay. Now, you might have two more things a teacher might have you do. Actually, I think it's three more things. One, they might have you show where the electrons are going with an arrow, okay? So don't, don't get worried, this is simple. You just take and say, okay, the carbon is more electronegative, so they'll draw this arrow with a line. Just don't worry, that's sort of like showing like a plus. And the electrons are going to the one end. You wouldn't have one here because they're equal. 
So carbon to oxygen would be another arrow going this way. And then be careful, this arrow is actually going to go this way. Okay, so if you see that, that's going to help you with molecular polarity, which you'll have to probably do next. And the other thing they might have you do is they might have you list what's called a partial positive, partial negative end. Super simple. It's a delta symbol. Looks like that. And they'll say carbon is a little bit negative because the electrons are being pulled towards it. Remember the definition of electronegativity. And so this one's a little positive because it's got the electrons going that way. This one you wouldn't have any. Um, this one, oxygen would be negative. Carbon would be positive. And then, be careful, oxygen here would be um, negative and hydrogen would be positive. Okay, so it's called a delta. It just means sort of or, or partially, okay? Next, you might have to list the bonds in increasing polarity, okay? So you might have to go from, you know, the least polar to the most polar, okay? So most polar is gonna be over here. The other thing that, that chemists might say is these on this side also have what's called the most ionic character. Uh, again, don't let that kind of worry you. It just means they're going to be more like um, an ionic bond where you have positive and negative permanently, okay? So who would be first? Let me grab a different color here. Let's use, let's use the purple. It looks fun. So we've got carbon, carbon being the, the smallest difference. That was actually zero. And then who's next? Hydrogen, carbon, um, hydrogen, carbon, and then oxygen and carbon. And last but not least, the most polar bond is oxygen to hydrogen. Again, that's going to help you with molecular polarity. And for us, that difference was way up at 1.4, okay? And then again, this one would have the most ionic character, and then you could say that this has the least ionic character. So don't get worried if you see that. It's actually pretty simple too, okay? And then we'll just put least polar. Um, in fact, you know, obviously on this end, we've even got nonpolar. All right, let's try another one. So here's the next example I have that I'm going to do with you, okay? I'm going to go pretty fast. This one's a lot easier. Here we go. We got sodium chloride. You may have heard of that before. It looks like this. So we have a sodium ion, a chloride ion. That would be the dot structure. Um, a bunch of sodium chloride bonds. So grab your electronegativity table, although you might be already suspicious that you know the answer to this one. So you've got sodium is 0.9. Chlorine is right there, 3.0. So you've got... Uh, what did I say? 0.9 minus 3.0. So let's say you were worried, you know, this is maybe where you're saying, oh, I just don't want to make a mistake. So 3.0, I'm just going to start with the bigger number, 0.9. 2.1. So that falls well within the cutoff for being ionic, and that's not a shocker. Um, it has a metal and a non-metal. Remember, metals are to the left of this dash, you know, line. So, of course, this is an ionic bond, okay? Um, what did I use? Purple last time, right? Ionic bond. All right. So, you know, if you had to do the partial positive, partial negative, I don't think you would. I think you would just say full out this one's positive and this one's negative. I'm not even sure anybody will do the arrows, okay? This is such a large difference in electronegativity. Okay, your turn. How exciting. Here we go. Um, drum roll, please. Um, you get to do hypofluorous acid, okay? Now, imagine if you weren't given that you know, the formula for it, you'd have to come up with that. So this is uh, oxy acid, hypo meaning has the least amount of oxygens. So what would be its dot structure? Here it is. The oxygen needs to go in the middle. Remember the least electronegative element goes in the middle. So oxygen is less than fluorine. And then big reveal, what bonds are there and what are their bond polarities? Here we go. I even drew the arrows and have the negative signs towards the more electronegative. 1.4 and 0.5. So this one just fits into the polar covalent bond category. Um, obviously, this one's less polar than that one um, and has, you know, this one has more ionic character. What does it look like? It's just a cute little bet molecule with 104 degrees, hydrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Great. So here we did it. Um, here's your electronegativity table. Here's your cutoffs. Here's your rules. You know, if you're worried, grab your calculator and off you go do some more with your own problems that you have assigned. Good luck, chemists.